Okay, so we travel a ton for <laughs> wedding filmmaking. Like I think uh, I think this year we have a total like 10 or 12 or 13 or 15, I don't even know, something crazy, plane flights. And last year we traveled a ton. We actually do a lot of domestic travel, a lot of international travel. Like we just went to Israel a couple months ago and then went to India like a year or two ago and we're going to Canada. It's just like, whoa, <laughs> you know, we do a lot of travel. And I know starting out filmmaking, travel was one of those things that just scared me to death. And what I want to do is talk about a couple minimalist travel tips and hacks. Actually, it's going to be a lot. We've learned a lot about travel. And, you know, we're, we're wedding filmmakers. So a lot of these are going to be kind of wedding filmmaker related. But also, these are actually, actually, no, forget that. They're, they're going to be great travel tips for anyone traveling because, you know, we have spent a lot of time refining this. And by no means is it perfect. We're always kind of coming up with new travel tips and hacks and things like that. But I really hope this is helpful for you guys. And there's, I'm gonna be looking at my computer a lot because I have so many things I wanna talk about. But okay, the first thing I wanna talk about, and this is just, if you take one thing away from this video, this is it. This has changed us completely in how we travel. And so as far as minimalist travel tips go, I think the most minimalist thing that you can do is actually reduce the cost. Of trips. I mean, what's more minimal than that than like reducing how much it costs to go somewhere? And this is, oh, this is amazing. So this is, this is a little secret. I know I'm building this up, but this will change your life. So Southwest, okay, Southwest Airlines has this thing called the Companion Pass. And what it is, it is truly like the eighth wonder of the world. And if you have it, it allows you to anywhere you fly with Southwest, when you buy a ticket, okay, say it's from California to Florida, you can bring a person with you on that same flight as your companion for free. Free. For free. So you would just pay for your ticket and then I think you pay for like taxes for the other ticket and that's it. So for husband and wife teams like me and my wife, oh my goodness, we have already, we have this companion pass and it has saved us like $3,000 already because she's flown for free for like five or six trips, mind blown. Okay, but how do you get this pass? So one way is to do like 100 flights through Southwest. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna do that. Another way is to get 100,000 points. That's hard, that's really, really hard. That's, that's a lot of money. Okay, but here's where the secret comes in. So every year, or a couple times a year, Southwest has this amazing deal on their credit card. So I actually got it this year. When you sign up for their credit card, which is like $79 a year or something like that, you actually get the companion pass for free. What? If you spend like $1,000 on the card within the first three months or something like that. Best $79 ever so what you want to do is um actually what you want to do after this video if you're really interested in this which why wouldn't you be it's insane type in southwest companion pass credit card deals on google and you'll find all these tips on how to get that companion pass it is awesome awesome so do that and also what i found so i've flown so many different airlines i've flown america delta emirates turkish airlines um and just a bunch of other rent, Alaska, and I've flown them all for filmmaking and gear. And Southwest is the best when it comes to traveling as a filmmaker, and I'll tell you why. So first is um, Southwest allows you two free checked bags every single time you travel. All the other airlines, they charge through the roof for baggage. And when you're flying with gear, Having those two free check bags is insane. When I'm flying with my wife, we get four free check bags. It is awesome. And you know, it's usually the cheapest airline because they're kind of a no frills airline. So they don't have, you know, like power plugs on the plane. They don't have, you know, TVs, but you don't need that. You just need to get to your destination and it allows you to charge way less to couples when it comes to travel. And Southwest flies pretty much everywhere in the States and they just added Hawaii, which is so cool. I really wanna go to Hawaii for a wedding. So if anyone's getting married in Hawaii, let me know, cause I'd love to film it. Okay, so Southwest is another, is our huge travel hack. And another thing is Southwest, what's really cool about them is 
you can actually get hotels through Southwest, their website, you can get your flight, obviously, through Southwest, and you can book your car through Southwest, and that is what we do. We do our whole travel through Southwest, and by doing that, we get points for everything. We get points for our hotel, we get points for our car, points for our flight, and we have the Southwest credit card, so every time we buy anything with through the Southwest uh, website, we get double the points. So if we spent $500 on flying somewhere, we get 500 points plus a $500 or 500 point bonus because we use a Southwest credit card. So huge travel hack, Southwest, Southwest, Southwest. <laughs> and um, I'm just making sure I'm in my mark for focus. Uh, so yeah, do Southwest. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of get into the more uh, minimalist kind of bags and gear and what we bring and things like that. So when I'm traveling, I like to travel as minimal as possible. And so I really like to only bring um, two bags, two gear bags, and a small little carry-on bag. And so real quick with the gear, I always want to carry on my main gear. I always think about, okay, if I had to get to a wedding location and only have this, would I be able to shoot the wedding? Okay, and that's everything that I want in my carry-on gear bag. So in my carry-on gear bag, I use this awesome bag, it's called the Think Tank. Um, it's just a Think Tank bag, I'll put the exact description of that bag below or the exact model number that I got. Oh my gosh, game changer, this thing is a beast. So I used to have the Pelican 1510 case and I used to travel with that for a long time. It's actually really great because it's like built like a tank, but uh, you can't really fit that much in there, to be honest. I found myself a lot of times just not being able to fit everything I wanted. And a huge travel tip is what I found is this bag just looked heavy to the flight attendant. So when they saw me walking to like the gate with it, they're like, oh my gosh, that looks heavy. We should weigh it. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's too heavy. We need to check it under the plane. I'm like, no, that's my gear. So what's awesome about the Think Tank bag is it looks like a regular suitcase. And that this has been amazing because no one ever asked me any questions of like, hey, is that too heavy? They just think I'm going on the plane with clothes. And that is awesome. And what's cool about this bag is I can fit everything in it. It just has so many little pockets. It's not a hard case, it's more of a soft case. And I can fit all my stuff in it, way more than I could fit in the Pelican. And the best thing about this case is it's perfectly sized to fit the carry-on requirements of international and domestic flights. And for international flights, because it doesn't look like a gear bag, it's way easier to carry on to the plane and not get, you know, like, oh, like we need to check that thing. And also, another tip, easier to go through customs if you're traveling internationally because it doesn't look like you're there for a big film shoot and they don't ask you all these questions because you're just rolling up with, you know, a little bag and it's, it's awesome. And, um, you know, I can fit everything in it. I'll kind of show an overhead view of the bag, but I can fit my drone in it. I can fit four camera bodies, like what? I can fit, no, I can fit five camera bodies. I can fit batteries, I can fit all my audio stuff, my chargers, my everything. It's just all there in all these little pockets. It's in all my lenses, everything. And it even has this cool like front flap that you can uh, just store quick stuff in. It's insane, the wheels are awesome. It's one of my favorite bags for travel. It is a little expensive, but I kind of put it off for a while, but I pulled the trigger best decision ever. So that's my first bag and that goes on the plane with me. I do not let it leave my sight. And then um, the other bag that I have is my tripod bag. So this is so cool because it's like the perfect size. I can check it, I always check this bag and with that carry-on bag that I bring and my tripod bag, that's all I bring to weddings and that's all I need to ever go to a location, to go to a ceremony or reception. And in this tripod bag, I can fit three tripods, two light stands, a mic stand. I could fit both of my uh, shoulder camera bags. And what's so cool is there's just so much space in there. I usually don't even bring a suitcase for when I'm traveling. I'll put my clothes in this bag because there's so, many, there's so much space. I'll put also my, like, my hair dryer, and my steamer and everything. And this will be like my main check bag. And it'll also have my gear in it. It's just perfect. And it is, this one's also a little pricey, but it is just so well made. It is so solid. It can fit everything I need on for traveling. And then on the wedding day, I can put like snacks and waters in there. And it's just awesome. And one of the coolest features I love about it is 
like a lot of tripod bags, they're just so horribly made that when you stand them up, they fall over because they're so top heavy. I don't know what the people at Tenba did, but they are geniuses because when you stand this bag up, it stands on its own. And I know that sounds like a stupid thing, but it is so helpful when you're going through the airport and you just like want to lean it up against something you can. So let me make sure I got, yeah. So it's just, uh, those two bags are my, my travel warriors and they're awesome. And so those other two bags have helped me a ton. Definitely recommend getting both of those. They'll change your life when it comes to travel. And then another, a couple other travel things that have been game changing is I just got the Bose Quiet Comfort headphones. Do yourself a favor. If you ever step foot on, the pl on a plane in your life, get these headphones. They are, they're magic. They're just pure magic. You put them on the plane, you, you get on the plane, you turn them on, the plane's super loud, you know, with all the wind and just the, you know, the plane sound. It's like you're, it's just so annoying. It's so loud. You can hear everybody. You put these things on and it is just complete silence. It is awesome. I like to be super well rested when I get to a place. And surprisingly, these headphones help so much. It literally, you can't hear any of the plane sound. I can just literally be in my own little world. I can listen to music. It's their awesome headphones for editing. Like I'll bring my laptop on the plane. I'll plug them, you know, plug them into the laptop or use the wireless feature. And I can just be in my own little bubble and get work done. I can get edits done because I'm not distracted by everyone. I hear no sound. They're absolutely magic. The sound quality is incredible and they're wireless. And let me tell you, if you have not get on the wireless bandwagon, it is awesome. Being on a plane, having your phone in your pocket, listening to music is insane. And I've done research upon research on the best noise canceling headphones. And these are bar none the best. Like just do yourself a favor, pick them up. I'll put the link to, I have both versions. So I have the latest wireless Bluetooth version, version, which is insane. I love it, it's my favorite. But if you don't wanna spend the extra money on this version and you, you, want, you don't want wireless, you can get the wired version, which is the exact same technology. It does not sound any different. The only difference is one version has a wire and the other one is wireless. The wired version is like half off. I have those as well that I'll, um, I think a buddy of mine's borrowing them right now, but they are insane, same quality, way cheaper, half off. Get one of these, I mean, just get them. It'll change your life. Really, it will change your life. And then, <clears throat> okay, so that's one tip. And another tip is if you're doing long flights, how many of you guys have tried to sleep on a plane? It's, it's, uh, it is hard, it, it is pretty hard. And I've tried all the neck, neck pillows. I've tried all the things. And you know, this being more of a minimalist video, I didn't want a super bulky neck pillow. I didn't want something that was gonna take up a bunch of space in my bag. <sighs> I found the neck pillow, neck pillow to rule all neck pillows. It is called the turtle neck pillow. I'll put the link below. It is insane. I've never slept on the plane. I've never been able to sleep on a plane but with this pillow. It, it's like a scarf, it wraps around your neck and it just perfectly cradles your head. It is awesome. Please check it out, it has been a game changer for us. I'll put the link below for that too. And it's it's one of the best minimal things. You can actually, you don't even have to put it in your bag because it's a scarf, you can like strap it on the top of your bag. It's, it's awesome. So another really cool tip when it comes to traveling for weddings is airport hotels. So. This is kind of a little known secret that I didn't really know was a thing, but before, like in the first year or two when we were traveling, we, we did Airbnbs for everything. Now I love Airbnbs because you get like a whole house, but what I found is they're actually not the best because for business travel. Because when you get to an Airbnb, a lot of times, you know, you don't know if they have all the amenities you need. Maybe like like simple things, like maybe the outlets don't work properly because it's like a house and not a hotel. And when you need to charge a bunch of things, you need your outlets to work. And sometimes it doesn't have the best Wi-Fi. You know, sometimes it doesn't have, you know, just the things that you need. What I love about airport hotels, I'll tell you this. So first, if you get an airport hotel, you can get all the airport hotels at any airport, have free shuttles from the airport to the hotel for free. Like 
for free. You don't gotta get a Lyft, you don't gotta get an Uber. This is insane because you can get off your plane after a long flight, just get that shuttle to the hotel and you're at your hotel. And then what's cool is when you leave going back home, you can get that airport hotel to the hotel and it's free, it's awesome. And the cool thing about hotels versus Airbnbs is all their plugs work, their Wi-Fi is awesome, the rooms are super, super clean, there's no spiders, there's no anything, which we found like a lot of the Airbnbs just weren't the cleanest. And uh, what's really cool is all the most of the airport hotels have like a Starbucks built into the airport. So, you know, the next day at the wedding, you can just wake up really early, get Starbucks on your way out of the hotel. You don't got to drive to a Starbucks. They have like little amenities in the hotel that you can get, like if you forgot your deodorant, if you forgot, you know, your razor or like you need tissues or hand sanitizer for the wedding day, you don't got to like go to Target. They have them in the hotel. They have hair dryers, they have irons. They just, it's so much easier using an airport hotel and they're usually really nice because since I, I used to think, oh, airport hotels, they're like lame and sketchy and they're not as nice. No, they're the opposite because a lot of, they kind of cater to more business travelers. They are more upscale and they're actually more affordable than non-airport hotels. Like if you look at a hotel in the area that's outside of like the airport area, they're those hotels sometimes are more expensive whereas the airport ones are cheaper. So little travel hack and Try doing an airport hotel at your next wedding, it'll change your life or your next travel wedding. Okay, so um, another, another really cool thing that has helped us insane with travel is, so I used to bring a big hard drive to travel with weddings to edit off my laptop and it was just big and bulky and not very minimal and I just got this amazing hard drive. It's called a Samsung SSD drive. I'll put the link below. Oh my goodness, it is like this big. So small, super fast. And the reason um, it's small, but it's also an SSD. I think I get like 400 megabit write speeds on my laptop. And for editing 4K stuff on the plane, it's bus power too, so you don't gotta plug it into the wall. It's insane, super minimalist, has changed how I edit on a plane. I can edit on my laptop on the plane, it's awesome. Okay, so the other thing is a MacBook. So when I was buying my laptop, I could have chosen like a big beefy MacBook Pro, or a MacBook. And I, I actually decided on a MacBook. It's actually the one right here. I can kind of show you guys or I'll, I'll do a like top down view. But it's awesome. It's so tiny. It was only like a thousand bucks and it's great for travel. It's like, there, it's, it's even thinner, I think, than the Apple's MacBook Air. And it can edit my 4K footage great in Final Cut. I have no slowdown issues. If I ever do, I use proxy. It's awesome, and I got the smallest version. I think this is the 13 inch version. Oh my gosh, game changer. I used to have like the biggest MacBook Pro. That thing was huge, I didn't need a screen that big. And I think they have like 17 and 15 and 13. 13 inch screen is the way to go. When you're on a plane and you have like that tiny little tray area, oh my gosh, editing like Editing with the 13 inch is just so much nicer because you have so much space. You can put the hard drive, you can put your drink, it's, it's awesome. So I'll put the link to this one also down below. And then another um, travel tip is I always like, I'm kind of a nerd, I love my Nintendo Switch. It is so much fun. I can play it on a plane and feel rested because I'm not doing work stuff. Like. Even if you're just casually into video games, the Nintendo Switch is awesome. It's so minimal, it's so small, but it's like you're playing, a, the graphics are as good as playing a full console and you can have all your games loaded in there, you can have them downloaded. I love my Switch, it's awesome. It's my favorite travel companion, one of my favorites. And I could play like Mario Kart on the plane in the sky, like, oh, it's awesome. I'll put the link to that below. I love, I love that thing. Okay. And another travel hack is bringing wet ones onto the plane because uh, like they don't clean your tray. Like when you get on a plane, like all this, there, there could have been someone with like, like West Nile, you know, or I don't even know if that's contagious. I'm just a crazy disease and touched everything and sneezed on everything. And the worst thing is to get to your location and, you know, feel that scratch in the back of your throat and be like, oh my gosh, I'm sick and I have a wedding the next day the worst. So I always bring wet ones on my carry-on bag and I wipe down anything that I'm gonna to be touching. It literally takes a minute, but it saves me from getting sick. Get wet ones. And then, let's see. Another quick tip is on Southwest planes, 
um, it's open seating. So what you're gonna, a, a cool tip is actually to sit all the way in the back of the plane because sometimes when you sit all the way in the back, you can actually get a whole aisle to yourself because everyone, when they get on the plane, they always get the first couple rows of seats and no one ever wants to sit in the back. But if you sit in the back, more than likely, if it's kind of a semi-empty flight, you're gonna get a whole row to yourself, which is awesome. So that's another quick tip. All right, on to the next tip. And the reason I have my phone now is because my laptop died and all my tips are on there. And for some reason, charger isn't properly charging this. So we're, uh, we're gonna use the phone instead. So the next tip that I have is for rental cars. Now rental cars can get really expensive and you always have to get them if you're traveling you know, out of state. And we found a couple of things that work really well. So one is Southwest, I talked about it previous that you can get your rental car through them, but they actually have a special offers page where it has all the major rental car companies. And if you click one of the companies through only through the special offers page, it'll give you a discount on every single rental car company. And sometimes the discount is massive. Like I look on Southwest website with just the regular car rental page and it could be like a hundred dollars a day, but then I go through the discount page that I'll link below and sometimes it'll be like $70 a day or $50 a day. It'll be like a $30 discount a day. This one's huge. And um, also some of our favorite rental car companies, Hertz is really awesome because what's awesome about Hertz is if you're a triple A member, they'll actually waive the uh, young driver's fee because this is kind of the super lame thing that we had to deal with for a long time that if you're renting a car and you're under the age of 25 they charge you an additional cost per day to rent that car it's really dumb but all rental car companies do it but Hertz if you have a AAA membership they avoid that fee which is awesome Hertz is probably my favorite car rental company to go with just because they have a great royalty program their cars are always really nice and their customer service is just top notch but recently I've started using thrifty and dollar now thrifty and dollar they're like the budget of the budget car rentals and I was really scared about them for the longest time because if you look up reviews on these companies they are not good they're just like bad but their rates are so much cheaper. Like I just did a really long trip to Tennessee and I needed a rental car for eight days. And that's a long time. And Hertz was about $100, $110 more expensive than Thrifty. And so I gave Thrifty a chance and it was they actually really surprised me and got my rental car and it was great and I saved a bunch of money. And then another really important tip when traveling and getting rental cars, so here's a really lame thing. Everyone knows it's way more expensive for anything in the airport. And the same goes for rental cars. So when you rent a rental car, when you look at your receipt, you'll see an airport tax. And the airport tax is usually pretty massive. Like the last car I rented, the airport tax was $70, $70. But if you rent your car, say if you find a Hertz that's 10 minutes right outside of the airport and just get an Uber there to that Hertz when your flight lands, that whole fee is waived because they don't have the airport tax fee. So you could actually end up saving 70 bucks. So I'll actually do this from time to time where I'll um, kind of look, when I book my travel, I'll look to see what is the cost to rent the car in the airport and then is there a neighboring, is there a Hertz or a Thrifty or a Dollar pretty close by? And I'll look on their website and I'll kind of do the estimate and sometimes it's like 70, $100 cheaper. So that's another really, really good tip when it comes to rental cars. And let me look at my trusted phone for see if there's anything else. All right, got that. Okay, so Another really important thing that I bring for travel is my Kindle. And I, like I said in previous videos that I've released on this channel, I love reading and the Kindle's just, it's really great because it, the, paper, the actual screen looks like an actual, actual paper. Like it doesn't look all electronic, it's e-ink, it's awesome. You can store as many books on there. And what's insane is the battery life lasts like 
I can go almost three months without charging the battery because it just uses hardly any battery. And what's so cool is, yeah, you can read books on your phone, they have the Kindle app, but what I found is, if I'm reading books on my phone, first the screen looks like a screen and it strains my eyes, and second, if I'm on my phone, I get distracted. I'll get like an Instagram notification and I'll go, oh, I'll go on Instagram and I won't even finish reading my book. Whereas the Kindle is just for reading books, and so then I, shut off all distractions, I can read it, I can fit as many books as I want on that Kindle. I'll put the link in the description to my favorite Kindle. They're super inexpensive and do yourself a favor, invest in your business, get a Kindle, start reading books. It's, it's a game changer. So let's see, another thing that I have is so, I also have a steamer. So this is this has been huge. I used to iron my clothes before a wedding day, but it was just, I would end up burning my clothes and it was always an issue, but I what I actually just invested in, or about a year or so ago, is a steamer. It's super portable. I bring it with me on all my trips and it's awesome because I can just hang up um, any of my clothes in my hotel room. I fill up the steamer with tap water and in 30 seconds it's steaming and I can just, you know, wave it on my, or kind of like move it across my clothes and it takes up all the, it takes out all the wrinkles. It's almost instant. It's magic. It's really, really, really nice. So they're super cheap. I'll put the link to two of my favorite steamers in the description below. And you're definitely going to want to pick one up because um, you want your clothes to look really nice before the wedding day and ironing is just a hassle. It takes a lot of time. Steaming is way, 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 way easier. What else do we have here? Okay. So what you'll find if you travel, this is kind of a newer thing, that when you're going through TSA now, they say, as you're getting to like, you know, you have to put your laptop in the bag and your shoes and blah, blah, blah. They've started saying, if you have any electronics larger than a cell phone, you have to take them out individually and put them in their separate trays. Uh, yeah, we're filmmakers, like our whole bag has electronics larger than a cell phone. Do you seriously want me to take out every single... I asked this once because the lady was like, do you have any electronics larger than a cell phone? I was like, yeah, uh, I'm a filmmaker, like my whole... I have like 10 cameras in that bag. And she's like, oh, okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna need you to take out every single one, take out your drone, all your everything, and put them in a separate bag. I was like, are you... S what? But like, if you're anything like me, that bag is expertly packed. Like if anything is taken out and moved around, it's gonna take you 30 minutes to put it all back together. Worst experience of my life. And so what I actually did is I, and, and the worst part, the worst part is even after I took out everything, they still pulled my bag aside and they had to check the whole thing. I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. So what I actually did is this is another important tip. I talked to a TSA person and he's like, yeah, because you have so much gear, it doesn't matter how much you take out, they're still gonna pull it aside and they're gonna check each and every one. So the next time they ask if you have any electronics larger than a cell phone, just say no, because they're gonna check it anyways. So that's what I've started to do. When they say that, I'm just like, nope. And the, good, the cool thing is my bag looks just like a suitcase. So, like they're not gonna be like, oh, there's gear in there, take everything out. Because that Think Tank bag is awesome, looks like a suitcase. And you know, I, I, I'm not, so yes, I'm technically not being 100% truthful, but that's what the TSA person said. Like, don't tell them no. Like I got permission from TSA, tell them no, because it's actually gonna be easier for you and for us to just pull your bag aside and do a quick swab of everything and you're on your way rather than taking everything out. So the next time you go, you're traveling with a big case with a bunch of gear and they say, any electronics, because just be like, nope. And they'll scan, it'll get pulled aside and they'll do their swab and it'll be way easier than taking everything out. And the last thing is I bring a simple just backpack and I'll put my gimbal in that backpack on the plane. So those are all my travel tips for traveling as minimally and as cost effectively as possible. We have been traveling for a long time. These are really have made our lives so much easier. And I know when I was first traveling for weddings, this stuff was overwhelming for me. So um, feel free to, in the comments below, ask any questions you have about travel. I'll do my best. <clears throat> to get back to you guys. And I'd love to hear your travel tips because I am like a travel hack 
um, obsessor. I always wanna know the latest things on how to travel more effectively, how to travel more minimally. So let me know if you found like a super awesome bag that I haven't heard of. Oh, and then before I forget, actually, there's one more travel tip. So. I actually am a fan of wallet phone cases and I got this super rad one. I love the leather ones and I've tested out a bunch and most leather phone cases, what ends up happening is they get all frayed on the edges in the first couple days and they start looking really gross. And the reason I love these is it's so minimal, like right here in the back of this phone, I can fit everything I need and I don't even bring a wallet anymore anywhere I go. I just bring this case and it has my business, um, my business card and it has um, my business credit card and my personal card and my ID all here. So I can go to the airport, I can just pull it out and I can get what I need. I can pull out my ID when I'm going through TSA. This case is amazing. It's so well made, it's just awesome. I'll put the link to the case below um, and you actually get a, a special discount if you get that case with this link. And I love it, it's awesome. They have it for all the new iPhones and yeah, it's, it's just, Super, 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 super rad. And so, yeah, I'll put that link below. So that was all my travel tips. I really hope these are really helpful for you guys. Check out all the links. There's gonna be like a bazillion of them in the description below for all the products I mentioned and for all the discounts and everything like that. And subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna to try to come up with more travel tips like this. Let me know if this was helpful. I know it was really helpful for me. I would have loved something like this. And then, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. And then last thing is we're Presets are coming out really soon. Click the link right here if you wanna be the first to hear about them, put in your email. If you're on that email list, you'll actually get a special discount when they come out. You're gonna to wanna to grab them because there are special video only presets that we use for all our wedding films and you're definitely gonna to wanna to nab them when they come out. Alrighty, well that is, that is everything. I hope that was super helpful for you guys and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, see you guys.